Hi everyone, it's Rio Cloudsync. In today's session, we'll look at onboarding our Windows client devices into Defender for Endpoint. We'll also look at the integration between Defender for Cloud Apps and DFE, as well as blocking or restricting generative AI apps in the modern workplace. So first things first, we need to onboard our Windows client devices to our DFE console. How we go about that? Well, first things first, the Windows client devices need to be managed by Microsoft Intune, which is our MDM provider, our mobile device management provider. On the left-hand service pane, we want to scroll down, and at this moment in time, we're in Defender XDR, and we need to either be a security admin or a global administrator. Where we see System, we want to select Settings, and this will take us to the org-wide settings for all the different solutions within Defender XDR, including DFE, Defender for Cloud Apps, um, Email Collaboration, which is Defender for Office 365. For this particular um, scenario, we're looking at Defender for Endpoint, so we're going to click Endpoints. And we, what we want to focus on is the Advanced Features tab under General, where we can see a load of toggles in relation to Defender for Endpoint, such as enable EDR in block mode, which is our first line of defense for our Endpoint clients, allow our block files, so file hashes and uh, file URLs, etc, etc. But what we want to look at is the integration between the Intune and DFE console. So if we scroll down, we'll see an option for here for Microsoft Intune connection. And we want to make sure that's toggled to on, which from a DFE perspective, that's great and that's enabled. The second step is to access Microsoft Intune, where of course we want that Windows client device to be onboarded to Microsoft Intune as an MDM provider, albeit through the out-of-box experience or through Access Work or School or through Windows Autopilot. Once you see the device showing, in your all devices. We then want to navigate to endpoint security because we want to onboard the device to Defender for Endpoint using an EDR Sense agent. And how we go about that is by deploying it through a Microsoft Intune configuration profile. Or alternatively, we can go to the endpoint security pane and we can deploy it through where we see endpoint detection response down here. But before we get to that point, we need to scroll down and where we see setup, we want to select Defender for Endpoint. And this is where, of course, in my tenant, it's shown as enabled, but in your tenant, it will show as disabled. We want to select the toggle to enable and hit save. If moving forward, we want to integrate compliance policies alongside our MD and Intune um, deployment, where you see compliance policy evaluation, we want to connect Windows devices version 10.015063 and allow Microsoft Defender for Endpoint to send telemetry uh, to Microsoft Intune. And we want to set that to on. That's whether or not we want to create a compliance policy based on device risk score, for example. Once we've done that, we've enabled the connection between Intune and Defender for Endpoint successfully. The next step is to onboard the device, which, like I said, we need to push out the MDM Sense agent, which is just the EDR um, agent we install on the machine. And what we do here is create policy. And there are many different ways to deploy the EDR sense agent. We could just do it through a, a standardized configuration profile or configure it through endpoint detection and response with Microsoft Intune itself. Here we want to select platform windows, profile, endpoint detection response. Press create. You want to give it a name. Um, it could be anything. In my scenario, I could just do test v2. Press next. And configuration settings. Um, pretty much leave as is for the time being. Um, I ex expedited telemetry has been deprecated as well as sample sharing. All you really need to care about is the Defender for Endpoint client configuration package type, which we want to set to auto from connector. The other options you see on the list here are if you want to onboard the device to another MDE um, console outside of your existing tenant, which you need to use a um, onboarding package for. But because we're using the connection piece between DFE and Intune, we can use auto from connector. Once we've done that, we want to. Uh, we don't need to select scope tags, but we'll select assignments, and that assignment piece will be a security group where our endpoint devices reside or, or user accounts reside. However, you want to go about it, you just need to assign a security group or a list of devices to the EDR sense agent. Once the EDR agent has been deployed, you will see um, a successful um, tip tick here to say, "Okay, great, your Windows devices are onboarded to EDR." And you can see the EDR onboarding status here, and you can refresh the report, and it will show the devices as onboarded. 
This is a test tenant, so I've got no devices as of yet, but that's what you would see. So what we've done so far is, um, of course, you've onboarded the device to Microsoft Intune, you've set up the connection piece between Intune and Defender for Endpoint, you've pushed out the EDR Sense Agent. Um, next step is to enable the connection piece between Defender for Cloud Apps and Defender for Endpoint. So Defender for Cloud Apps is a, um, a SaaS solution, okay? It's a CASB solution, a cloud access security broker. And what it does, it finds gaps in your security posture around your applications, okay? And also identifies shadow IT in your organization. Especially when we're talking generative AI at this moment in time with Copilot and of course ChatGPT, where you know your data doesn't stay within your service boundary it can be really um, dangerous in regards to your, your data security um, and data leakage. So we need to make sure those apps are either sanctioned or unsanctioned based on what we decide um, as a business we want to use. So the way in which we enable the connection between uh, Defender for Cloud Apps and DFE is, uh, once again, advanced features, which is found under settings and endpoints. And we want to look for an option for uh, Defender for Cloud Apps. So we want to turn that to on. Okay, so I can turn that to on. And the other thing we're looking for is custom network indicators. We want to make sure that's on as well, because that's what conducts our um, content filtering um, per se, um, as well as being able to block URLs, file hashes, um, that, that type of stuff. Uh, but just make sure you've um, pushed out a, a policy uh, through MDAV uh, to turn on um, network protection in block mode, and you've got the latest um, anti-malware version, so MDAV version. So once you've got those two toggles on, the custom network indicators and Defender for Cloud Apps, you make sure you've got the MDAV up to date and you've enabled network protection in block mode, which is found in Microsoft Intune um, uh, MDAV configuration policy. Um, you want to save preferences. Save preferences. So that's cool. So not only have we got the connection piece between Intune and Defender, we've got the connection piece between Defender for Cloud Apps and uh, Defender XDR. We now want to go to uh, settings again um, endpoints and we can have a look at these custom network indicators just to see if we've got any at this moment in time and like i said there are several different indicators we can um, allow or restrict file hashes ip addresses urls urls or domains and certificates what we're focused on today is urls and domains of course i can come in here and i can add an item i can give it um you know i can provide the URL and domain, give it a title, a description, and whether or not I want this to expire, this, this restriction. And I can also check whether or not people are accessing that URL uh, before I go ahead and implement a, a block control, for example. Um, but that that's a, a standalone version of the, the, the product set. What I can do is I can use Defender for Cloud Apps, which um, allows me to block a particular category. Um, such as generative AI um, SaaS applications. I can also, before I block an application, I can review the risk or associated with that particular application and deem whether or not I want to block the application based on Microsoft Threat Intelligence Teams. So that's just a, an extended uh, you know, level of web content filtering um, all up. Um, so that's individual blocking URLs. We can also select web content filtering where I can pick genres such as um, uh, gambling, social media, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if I was to add a policy, give that a policy name, test v2. Next, you've got a load of categories I can restrict. Once again, very, very dependent on um, having network protection in block mode and smart screen enabled. Uh, but what we're really focusing on today is if I was to go into Cloud App Catalog, under where we see cloud apps, which is Defender for Cloud Apps. And as you see, all the different services are broken down into the different solution areas. Defender for Cloud Apps, Defender for Office 365, Defender for Identity, Sentinel Integration, Threat Intelligence, which was um, tdi.defender.microsoft.com. Um, it's all here. It's Defender XDR is an umbrella term, right? It's a uniform console. Um, so yeah, once again, you'll see a load of applications Defender for Cloud Apps has um, conducted discovery on. Um, and if I press all in page, you see there's over 33,000 applications Microsoft um, uh, conduct a kind of risk assessment against, all right? And what we're focusing on is those generative AI apps. So there will be a category um, somewhere here called generative AI, and you can see there's 481 uh, to be exact. And what I could do is I could bulk select all in the page. Of course, I'd have to go to the next page to do the next page. And I could press action, oh, sorry. 
I can tag as unsanctioned. And what unsanctioned means is um, you're blocking those applications. And then they, in return, will be added into a custom network indicator and the EDR sense agent will restrict it by um, smart screen. Um, terminology around Microsoft around sanctioned and unsanctioned is a bit um, strange. Because when I think of sanctioned, I think of restricted. And when I think of unsanctioned, I think of non-restricted. Uh, but it's the other way around, right? Sanction means you're good to go. You're safe. I'm I'm telling you as an application, you, you can run in my organization. Unsanctioned means um, you're, you're blocked in, in this case. Um, however, if I was to unselect all and search for an app, maybe I'm searching for OpenAI, which is... ChatGPT, right? Microsoft partnered up with OpenAI, multi-billion pound investment, um, you know, copied their LLM, their large language model, uh, to elevate the use of Copilot for Microsoft 365, Copilot for security and all that lovely stuff. Um, but if you're using ChatGPT standalone outside of the Microsoft guardrails and boundaries, um, you're prone for um, uh, data exfiltration, data exposure. Um, so that's why anyone wants to really use Copilot for Microsoft 365 in terms of security, compliance, and privacy. Um, so what we can do here is we can see ChatGPT and we can say, okay, Microsoft DNA, good, you know, um, um, yeah, risk score, by the way, the higher the risk score, um, the Microsoft deem the, the, the application safe and, and secure, the lower the risk score, um, they deem it not safe. And you'll see the, the bar show as in red. Um, but I can restrict this and I can say tag as unsanctioned. So if I was to do this, there you go. And it's sanctioned. It's, um, and I can... If I was to remove the OpenAI in the search field here, and I was to scroll down in terms of risk score in regards to the filter, you can see all the bad AI applications we can restrict as well. Um, but that's just me blocking ChatGPT, for example. Um, I could filter via um, uh, regulatory factors as well, um, not just risk score, but which Microsoft deem as bad. But if I was to click into one of these AI applications, I could see whether or not they could apply against regulatory frameworks as well, um, and just generally how secure they are. So once I've blocked it, like I said, what you'd see generally in settings, in endpoints, it may take some time. I'm not going to say it's um, simultaneous in your other domains, is the um, ChatGPT showing up as a custom network indicator and the source of that network indicator um, created by Depend for Cloud Apps. Uh, but that was just my quick video on uh, one onboarding into Microsoft Intune, onboarding into MDE, um, and um, establishing a connection between Defender for Cloud Apps and Defender for Endpoint. Any questions, please do let me know. I'm going to hope to get more videos out at some point. Thank you.